Our next speaker is uh, Mila Dimnikova from Wellington. She worked at Optimal Workshop as a data scientist. Uh, she's also been trained in ballet since a young age, um, but she's since hung up her point shoes, even though she does still, some, still do some contemporary dance. We're actually in the same contemporary dance class in Wellington, which um, for those of you who don't know, contemporary dance is mainly just rolling on the ground, so it's really fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's a more natural place for me to be, I think. Um, so, when she's not programming, um, she loves to zip around on her electric skateboard and she really loves cats. She was like, Rose, you have to tell people that I, I really love cats. So, Mila really loves cats and she's um, currently trying to maintain the balance of feline housemates and people housemates in her house. Welcome to the stage, Mila. difficulties. Hi everyone, <laughs> I'm Mila. A couple of years ago I was a Rails developer and now I'm a data scientist at Optimal Workshop. I've always loved mixing data and art together, so I'm really thrilled to talk to you today about data visualizations. Data visualizations let you present data or ideas in a visual way. And the field has gone way beyond simple graphs. Nowadays, data visualizations are used to analyze small and large data sets, as well as becoming the center of decision making and conversation. This talk, however, is not going to cover how to create all of the various types of graphs. There's a lot of online resources and I'll have links throughout my slides, as well as on the final slide for you. What I really wanna focus on today is how you can use data visualizations as a visual communication tool for your work. I've broken down the visual communication into four types. Within each type, I'll explain what kind of work you can communicate and how to do so effectively. Some of these types will be most useful for explaining how your code works. But really, visual communication is useful for all aspects of developers' responsibilities. But some of you might be thinking, this just sounds like a whole lot of more work. Why do I even bother? <coughs> For me, it helps with sharing my work with others. Using various data visualizations, I can communicate complex ideas to technical and non-technical people in a way that makes them understand my work. And this is super important. If you can't effectively explain your work to others, how will people appreciate what you've achieved? People don't know the full value of something until you show it to them. Data visualizations might be a best strategy to drive the importance and the coolness of your work to others. Visuals can quickly communicate a lot of information in a way that might require you to give lectures on software engineering principles. So let's start with analytical. I often see this. There's a small project that has a lot of visual changes, and people get really excited. Visual work is easier to understand. People get enthusiastic when they understand the value of what they see. 
but sometimes our work is purely in the background without much visuals to show. And unless you're prepared to teach people to read your code, often I see a lot of developers not bothering to find a way of explaining their work. So how can we fix this and generate a little bit more enthusiasm? One way is to use flow diagrams to visually explain how your code works step by step. Do you remember UML? <laughs> it provides a standard way to visualize the design of a software system. There's a lot of documentation on using the right shapes, arrows, and icons so that you can effectively visualize a huge range of software projects. I picked out just a few examples here, but there honestly seems to be a UML diagram for everything. Or you could be a rebel and just draw your own diagram. UML is hard to understand if your audience is not familiar with the specific meaning of visual components. Remember, your goal here is to communicate how you built the feature. How did you improve the system? Not to become a UML artist. So just become an expert box drawer and make your own simple diagrams. Using UML or my own diagrams, I often use draw.io to create them, but pen and paper totally work too. Here are a few of my suggestions on a good flow diagram. Have a start and end point. Each box needs to have a simple descriptive label, and the boxes themselves could represent a class, method, or a step in the process. Use icons or logos instead of words. For example, draw a person for a human interaction. Use your app's success icon for the success step or add a screenshot of the customer form. These elements will help make the flow diagram more familiar. Keep it high level and simple. If you do want to show more complicated flows or use it for documentation, then do consider using UML instead of your own Rebel diagram standards. But seriously, keep it simple. <laughs> this is a very bad example of a class diagram. Please don't do this. If you commit to not writing spaghetti code, then also commit to not creating spaghetti flow diagrams. <laughs> when presenting these simple flow diagrams, people are analyzing the system. They're trying to understand how it works by looking at the inputs and the outputs. Use simple supporting graphs to also show the what you've made in the system, like the changes that you've made. Have you made any speed improvements? Have you reduced the number of errors? Visualizing these metrics alongside of your diagram will really help drive the value of your work to your audience. Status. When we have maintenance work or we're being on call, it's important to see that everything in the system is normal. Status type data visualizations let you visually see what is normal and spot anything out of the ordinary in your system project. So when you have to drop out of your sprint midway to put out some fires, your team can understand that something isn't quite normal. Data visualizations that let you compare or monitor things daily fall into this type. It can be just one graph or a whole dashboard of supporting graphs. Usually I see people adopting a dashboard for a status report. If you choose to have a small collection of graphs, make sure you divide it into three layers. At the top should be the most important information or metric. At the bottom should be graphs that provide supporting details to the graphs above them. Keep it simple. Keep the graphs simple. There's no 3D pie charts here, please. Broadcast the dashboard to a screen in the office or at least share it with the people that are interested in it. Color should be used to highlight important details or add another data dimension. It shouldn't be a display of your coloring and skills. Less is more also goes to the number of visualizations. Stick to about five to nine graphs to avoid the whole dashboard feeling overwhelming. To test if the dashboard is well designed, ask somebody to find something on it, um, like a piece of information on it. 
they should take around five seconds to do so. If they do take longer, try simplifying the graphs, have clearer labels, and make sure that all of the graphs are supporting the same story. There's a lot of apps and, and libraries available to create dashboards through drag and drop interaction. There's also a lot of JavaScript charting libraries that make it very simple to add graphs to your application. So just research your options and find something that works for you. Whatever you use, however, these apps and libraries are really cool, but they're not super smart. So they will let you create almost any kind of graph, regardless if the graph actually suits your data or not. To combat this, try using this chart suggestion diagram to check if you're using the right graph for the data you have. With the data in mind, what are you trying to communicate? Start in the middle and work your way outwards. Are you trying to compare something? Are you trying to show a relationship between something? Most apps and libraries should support all of the graph types that you see on this diagram. I also use this diagram to give me a bit of inspiration about what I could do with the data I have. To understand why we use certain graphs for certain types of data, I recommend reading this article by Rogue Penguin that explains how to visualize any data in the correct way. The article has very clear instructions on designing any kind of graph, and it's a really good starting point. Next story. So, you've just finished a project, and you've even written a report about it. Well, documentation is very important. It's hard for everyone to keep their attention on a long document when they simply want to know how the project went. So, reflecting on your project, you've had some ups and downs, you've made mistakes, and you've learnt new things. So tell your team the story of your project. And make it an epic one. <laughs> tell us about the betrayals and the triumphs and the biggest challenge that your team face. A timeline similar to this, minus a dragon or two, could be enough to communicate what it took for your team to release the project. Use the timeline to also communicate all of the other responsibilities that you've had. Apart from writing code, you could be responsible for analyzing user requirements or evaluating the system. So make sure you do include these into the timeline. Another thing you could try is to create an infographic. This might replace your whole project documentation or be an additional too long, didn't read type document. Infographics allow us to guide the reader from the start to the end of our story. Infographics lets you be in control of the order in which the reader learns about a certain topic. You can try writing a how-to guide or a project summary infographic. Here you want to use conversational casual tone. Play around with the layout. Unlike a Word document, you're not uh, constricted to the layout, so just place things where it feels right. Include images and graphs to further support your points, and because you're summarizing information, it should be a lot less writing for you. My favorite tool to use for infographics is Canva, but also try VisMe. Both tools have really nice, uh, simple drag and drop interaction and a lot of really good assets. If you really want to impress people, animate it. This is an interactive infographic by R2D3, introducing basics of machine learning. In infographics don't have to be static, um, but static or interactive, both are really great materials for your company's blog to increase the traffic to it. Last one, explorative. When the data that you're dealing with, um, sometimes it can have a lot of complex relationships, and there might be no right or wrong way to look at it. When this is your project or system, try creating a visualization that simply lets people explore and play around with it. These data visualizations have a choose-your-own-adventure vibe to them. 
They don't have a specific way of interpreting the data, so simply let people explore it for themselves. Build a visualization that lets people play and learn the complex relationships. For example, if your company deals with a lot of internal customer data, create a data visualization that lets your coworkers explore and the customer interaction with your app. Another example is TreeJack PyTree visualization, which is part of Autumn Workshop's products. It visualizes a detailed path of where survey participants clicked in a site structure and where they've selected their final answer. This visualization allows researchers to explore participant path, figure out where the participant got lost, and identify areas to improve. The main point I want you to notice here is that the visualization is not providing any conclusions. Instead, it's allowing people to explore the data through interaction to come up with their own conclusions. Explorative type of visualizations require a lot more work than the other types that I've mentioned. And that's because you are building a mini product. So you will need to consider browser support and a flexible data structure that might allow users to add the various filters, aggregations, and dimensions to the data. Something might go wrong. So how are you going to communicate the error to your user? You might also want to consider if the data that you're using has any weird edge cases. Figuring out how to handle all of this will ensure that you provide a smoother user experience. The user experience and design of these type of data visualizations is absolutely crucial. Who will be using this? Figure out the level of information that is appropriate for your target users. Consider being agile by doing a prototype and user testing it with people that might be viewing the data visualization before settling on just one idea. If you have a design or UX team, they can probably help you figure out how to do this. Don't be alone. Get a cross-functional team together to create beautiful data visualizations that would inspire people and generate meaningful work. I would suggest that you use d3.js to build these visualizations. In general, I found that this library lets you create the most flexible, beautiful visualizations. My only recommendation is that you don't use D3 to create simple graphs like bar charts. There's a lot of other charting libraries out there like c3.js that makes it a lot less, it just requires a lot less code to write. Okay. So we've just went through the four types of visual communication. And each type has a different strategy of communicating your work. In analytical, we use flowcharts to show a step-by-step -step process. In status, we are visually establishing what normal looks like using dashboards. In story, we use infographics to tell the story of our project. And in Explorative, we create interactive visualizations to let people explore data or systems. Each visual communication type does have overlapping elements. You can certainly use a bar chart for each type, but it's what you're trying to communicate with this chart that is different. So think about what you want your team to understand. This might require you to take elements from multiple communication types to get your point across. Use data visualizations as a visual communication tool to share your work with others. Be proud of your work and try to visualize it next time. These are the links I had throughout the slides. I'll share them on my Twitter. And thank you for listening. <laughs>